Well, joining us now is the Cabinet Secretary for Culture, Tourism and External Affairs, Ms Fiona Hislop. Fiona, tell me what the importance is of events like Expo North. Well, the energy, the talent, the networking opportunities of Expo North is so important to showcase the best of Scotland in terms of creative industries, but also that international link. And I'm very struck by the contributors that I've already met who are, who are taking part in some of the showcases or indeed the talks that are here. Um, it's really important that people can get together. So the heartbeat of our creative industries, the opportunities for people to come together. And the reputation of Expo North is, is renowned. Um, so I'm delighted to be here, uh, however briefly, to to share in this and to help make our contribution and to showcase that the show that the Scottish government uh, is committed to creative industries. If you look at the economic contribution, it's over three billion pounds, over fifteen thousand people employed, and we've got great talent in Scotland. We've got great potential. So I really want creative industries to be a key economic sector for the Scottish government. We recognise it as such, but it makes a big impact in both our economy and also our society, and importantly, our culture with all the films, musicians that you'll see on display here during Expo North. Now you join us of course also in the year of history, heritage and archaeology. Why is it important to have a focus like that? Well, it's part of our, our tourism offer is to make sure that we can come together as a country to showcase what's best. We've had different themed years for different issues. And this year, it's the year of history, heritage and archaeology. We've got so many different stories we can tell. And it's important that in how we present our history and heritage and archaeology, we can do so in very innovative ways. So, if we, for example, Minecraft have linked with St Kilda. So you can tell a story of something that's so remote, but using modern technology. And similarly, if you look at different other areas of our museums and galleries, that the interaction, the digital aspect of how we're presenting our history and heritage makes it more accessible, it broadcasts it internationally, and it encourages people to actually come and visit the real thing. So I think in terms of what we can do, I've just been up at the Inverness, um, the, 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 the tower at the castle, and the interaction they've used is using digital um, animation to help tell the story of St Columba, for example, that's thousands of years, but you're telling it in a modern and creative way. So Digital very much is part of all of our stories, even history, heritage and archaeology. And I think it's more important than ever we tell our stories. People come to hear about our stories. They want to know about our heritage. People want to know their heritage. And the archaeology of Scotland, the, uh, Scotland is renowned. Um, so I think in terms of making sure that we can attract visitors to Scotland, uh, tourists from Scotland themselves, but also internationally, we've had a great year. We've had 6% increase in the number of our tourist uh, visitors. That compares to to 4% um, for the rest of the UK, a 9% increase in spend compared to 2% for the rest of the UK. So Scotland really is motoring in terms of attracting tourists during this year. Well, let, let's, let's talk globally. When you go outside and visit other countries, um, are there ways that they market their heritage that you think, yeah, we could, we could be doing that? Well, I think the best country that I've seen in terms of branding was Slovenia. Um, because it is, uh, they, managed to, they, they managed to have love in the middle of their, 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 their word. And so they have lovely badges that have love as part of promoting Slovenia. So I think, I think they have the edge on that. But in, ter <laughs> in, in terms of how we do it, I think Scotland's brand is really well known. Visit Scotland do a tremendous job. Um, and in terms of what other countries do, yes, we're always learning from them. Visit Flanders, for example, do, do a huge amount for accessible tourism, um, encouraging people that maybe have carers or people who might never have a holiday. Uh, because of uh, circumstances, they bring together the tourism industry. That's a big thing in Spain, it's a big thing in Flanders. We're starting to do it in Scotland. So, yes, we, we're, we're seen as one of the best in terms of marketing and promotion, but we always need to learn, and that's part of what we're trying to do in terms of our international reach. Uh, we are an international country, we will continue to be an international, outward looking country, and Brexit uh, may, may be a problem for us, but it's a problem to be overcome. And there will always, always be a warm welcome in Scotland, here in Inverness, at Expo North, and indeed throughout our tourism and indeed our industry, because it's about people. And at the end of the day, the warmth of the people of Scotland, the welcome they get, will always make sure that we're a country that people want to visit. Minister, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.